All right. Got my new haircut going here. And my Starfleet Command shirt as usual. And we're up for another edition of Mike's Anything Goes. Where we left off before, we were talking about the Deadly Ringer episode part one with Lindsay Wagner. As you recall, this is the episode from the Bionic Woman series wherein Lindsay Wagner won the Emmy Award for 1977. And it's really well deserved. Uh, we're going to talk about part two in this video and um, what I feel were some of the problems overall with these episodes. This episode alone was very good. Okay, so. What we left off in part one was uh, a little bit of a backlog. Um, Jamie Summers, the real Jamie Summers, had been switched uh, by stealth uh, during the night by enemy agents who gassed her house. Uh, and legal Dr. Courtney and certain correction officers, wherein Jamie wakes up in Lisa Galloway's cell. And Lisa Galloway winds up in Ojai. Lisa Galloway, as you recall, was the enemy from the... Episode prelude episode uh, lookalike who had been given plastic surgery to have Jamie Summers features with the goal of killing Oscar Goldman. Uh, if you recall from the end of that episode, Oscar uh, successfully and Jamie successfully defeated her. But as a foreshadowing to this episode, um, the Deadly Ringer episode, Oscar tells Jamie at the end of uh, lookalike that. Because Lisa recently had plastic surgery, she's going to have Jamie Summers features for at least a year. And therefore, this sets off the plot for the Deadly Ringer episode. Um, okay, so when we last left off, uh, Jamie uh, was smart enough not to eat the contaminated uh, food. And she succeeds in escaping from the uh, penitentiary and makes a break for it. Um, in the meantime, Lisa Galloway is at the OSI office and she's experimenting with the OSI's uh, latest creation, Adrenalizen, which is mistakenly believed to be the source of Jamie Summers' strength. Um, the real Jamie Summers escapes and after making it through some swampland and whatever, manages to find, like, I believe it's like, it looks like a railroad depot or something like that. She breaks open the phone and calls Oscar. Uh, Oscar Goldman. Oscar has Rudy on the line secretly, and he's saying, oh, that girl Lisa Galloway, she did this to me, I'm the real Jamie. Oh, Jamie, where are you? Let me know. And unfortunately, Oscar does not believe the real Jamie's identity and calls the police. So when the police show up at the railroad depot, um, when Jamie comes outside, not only does she see the warden with several police officers, but she also sees the doctor and her henchmen who were involved in the plot to operate on her and um, replace her face with Lisa Galloway's face and then kill her. So now she realizes that the gig is up and that they're at the trapper. So Jamie runs back into the building and takes this older gentleman hostage. She blocks the door with a box full of 400 pound machine parts so the cops can't get in. They try blunderbuss tactics and start shooting at the windows, whatever, and she goes, she convinces the old guy who's convinced that she's something about her because he's very strong. He's like, hey, she's got a gun. She's going to kill me. So she goes, I want Oscar. So the warden calls in Oscar, and Oscar shows up, and he is skeptical. He does not believe that this is the real Jamie Summers, and Jamie Summers very cleverly says, Oscar, who's talking to him on a bullhorn, asked me a question. So Oscar lowers the bullhorn and whispers, what's your name? And he goes, I'm Jamie, I'm Jamie. And now Oscar goes, holy cow, this is, the really Jamie, this is the real Jamie Summers. And he rescues her. In the meantime, Lisa Galloway started to lose sight of the mission, which, if you recall, was to take the uh, adrenaline and give it to Dr. Courtney and sell it on the black market for a then exorbitant amount of $10 million. Well, Lisa starts to like the idea of being popular and well-liked and basically hatches her own plan to take over Jamie Summers' life and live out the rest of it in Ojai. So when she goes to the OSI laboratory, who was uh, supposed to do further research on the internals, and she takes most of it and keeps it for herself and gives them a little bit. So when they come to the lab, the lab's like, we only got a small portion. They realize that Lisa Galloway has it and is going to parts unknown. So, Lisa calls Dr. Courtney up from this payphone, and she's on her way to Ojai, and she's like, you know, um, I don't think I was, you can tell she's turning out of second thoughts, and Dr. Courtney's practically pulling what little Harry had out of his head, saying, where's the adrenaline? You know, 
And she's like, well, you know, believe me, your, your share of this, you'll be able to do whatever you want. I'll, make, I'll do plastic surgery on again. I'll make you beautiful. And she looks at the reflection in the uh, phone because goes, well, I'm already beautiful. I don't need that. I don't need any more. And um, money can buy you so much. And she's like, well, money can't buy everything. So, um, basically, uh, Lisa heads back to Ojai at the intention of taking over Jamie's life. So, while this is transpiring, it turns out that Plato, the little uh, rat that first experiments the adrenaline, it it dies. And Dr. Wells discovers that the adrenaline in compounds are breaking down and turning poisonous. And that this is eventually what's going to happen. At least she's going to die. So, um, Lisa starts getting sicker and sicker, and she starts having pains, and she can't sleep. But she calls the OSI office anonymously and tells them where Dr. Courtney is. And Dr. Courtney gets arrested. So, when Oscar shows up with the real Jamie Summers, he doesn't know that it is the real. He thinks it's Lisa Galloway. He's like, well, she's got the rest of the journals, and, you know. So, what do you think, Lisa? You're going to live out the rest of Jamie's life in Ojai? And after hearing that, Jamie figures out, you know, she wants to be heading up to Ojai to be with my parents. So, empathizing with the way she was treated, Jamie's like, look, Oscar, I want to head, I want to face her one-on-one. No guns, anything like that. So, um, uh, Jamie winds up going to Ojai and squares off against Lisa Galloway, uh, mano a mano. And, um, Lisa's like, who are you? I'm the real Jamie Summers. And she's eating more of this. It looks like bubble gum. I, oh, I'm the real Jamie Summers. And she's like throwing things at her. And uh, she breaks on uh, this table. And the real Jamie goes, if you were the real Jamie Summers, you wouldn't have done that because that's Jamie's favorite table. You know? And uh, and then, like, she's, oh, no one loves Lisa. No. So she starts emoting, whatever. And Jamie feels bad for her. And they have, a, like, a nice, sensitive moment. And... You know, the the bad Lisa, the bad Jamie, Lisa Galloway surrenders, and they take her to the hospital where they cure her at the last minute, and the way, the episode ends with Jamie giving her the uh, little uh, plaque that she had been sewing at the beginning, to your own self be true, It says, now that you know what you're like on the inside, like yourself on the outside, and he shows her a picture of Lisa Galloway's face, meaning get your face done so you look like you again. Um... I must admit that part two is disappointing in comparison to part one. And I'll tell you why. Because had Jamie not escaped prior to the end of part one, had they ended it with like you know like that scene with her in the in the uh, in the in the uh, in the padded cell with the photos on the wall, or like still unconscious. With the doctor and Andrew saying, we're going to kill you and, you know, operate you and bury you in Lisa Galloway's face. That would have been more dramatic. But when you know Jamie escapes, you know she's not going to get caught again. Um, So that means that it was really, the only twist was Oscar not believing Jamie when she called from the railroad depot. Um, That was a little exciting. But even then, that could have been played out better because, like, Oscar should have asked a more ambiguous question. Like, who are you? Of course you going to say Jamie. He should have said, you know, what's the Pythagorean theorem? Or, like, you know, who won the French and Indian War? Yeah, I used to always trip my sister up with that. I used to love saying that. I used to go, Michelle, who won the French and Indian War? She would go, uh, uh, the Indians. And, of course, you know, the British won that. And I go, oh, Michelle, the Cleveland Indians? And that's a little inside joke between me and my sister. It took her several years before she finally got the right answer. Anyway, but something like that would have been more effective. Uh, also, um, why didn't... Uh, Rudy and Oscar check um, Jamie's bionic ear, or Lisa Galloway's bionic when she was doing the testing. Well, they forgot about that. That's unimportant, you know. I guess they were in a rush because you know, uh, and you know, we don't know that it necessarily would not have worked. We don't know that. We're not sure. But I guess they just wanted to leave it to the elements of superhuman strength and not other enhanced senses because then it really would have been hard to tell. You know who the real Jamie Summers was, if in fact that the adrenals and also increased like hearing and auditory and tactile senses, that would have made it a real difficult uh, thing. Uh, you really have to uh, suspend disbelief, also, because um, there's a whole real big plot flaw with this adrenals and compound. Because Dr. Courtney says, 
oh, I discovered the secret to Jamie Summers' strength. And that was in, when he was in prison. But if the adrenaline was already discovered after he was in prison, and Jamie was strong before he went away to prison, then it couldn't have been the source of it. You, you can't put the cart before the horse. That was a big mistake. Also, uh, who, who is running security at the OSI? I mean, Oscar's used to be usually really fastidious and, like, really um, by-the-numbers type of guy. It's like you need a level 6 uh, clearance to know that Jamie's bionic. Yet it's like, however, if you like to be a uh, thug the age of your grandfather and you like to gas Jamie Summers' house, here's her address and here's how you do it. I'm like, who, who was, like, in on this plot mean to know that? I mean, don't you think they would have, or they would have counter surveillance? Like, this is the most important asset. Assuming, you know, next to Steve Austin. And if you recall, in the, I think the last episode of the series, um, which was Run, Jamie, Run, Jamie wants to retire. And, like, in a, in a uh, plot device similar to the Prisoner TV series with Patrick McGowan, they're like, you can't retire. You're worth too much in the open market. What if our enemies capture you when they, they disassemble your box? So why wouldn't they have somebody, like, at least in a clandestine way, watching Jamie's house all the time. Doesn't make any sense. At least, like, secretly. So maybe even if Jamie doesn't know, there's somebody there that's watching what the hell's going on. Okay? So that was a big gap, too. Like, oh, you know, gee, it's like, yeah, hey, you know, well, you know, do you want to see Bonnet? We can tell you. But if you like to gas her or knock her out and fly her on a plane thousands of miles and replace her with her evil double, here's how you do it, and we'll be happy to do it. Comments of the old side. I mean, so that was a real big mess. Um, and again, um, uh, like I said, had the plot ended, for the, had part one ended with Jamie still in captivity and in dire circumstances, plot, part two would have been much more exciting. But when she already escaped, I mean, you know, I, I, part one's really pretty horrific up to the point of Jamie's escape. It's eerie. Um, these people have thought this plan out pretty well to a T. Um, you know, the idea of the, the letters given to the warden and the adrenaline idea, which is really, really well done, you know. Um, but it falls apart. Jamie, uh, Lindsay Summers acting, uh, Lindsay Wagner's acting is excellent um, in this, especially playing the two roles um, uh, of Jamie and Lisa Galloway. She just really did a very good job. So with the plot um, infirmities with it, this is still a very good episode. It's definitely one of the better episodes of the series. And she had a lot of good ones. Uh, but it's definitely worth watching. Um, I think you'd enjoy it. Especially part one. Part two was a little bit disappointing. Like, if I was going to give, like, you know, uh, a high score to 10, I would give part one, like, a 9 out of 10. And, like, part two, like, a 7 out of 10. Like, it's not as good, you know? And part one would have gotten a 10 out of 10 had it ended on the way I think it should have ended with Jamie still in captivity and in dire straits. Then it definitely would have got a 10. But it's a really well-done episode. So please try to watch it when you can. Um, you know, it's definitely worth watching. And, you know, uh, yeah, I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, Lindsay Wagner garnered the Emmy Award for it, and she definitely deserved it by her performance here. And uh, please watch it, um, and let me know what you think, if you agree or disagree. And uh, I hope to hear from you soon. Okay, this is Mike Freeman, as anything goes. Signing out.